as more and more people make the switch from an internal combustion engine car to a plug-in one, there's an increasing demand for electric car charging infrastructure, both slow and quick. And while many early adopters do have access to off-street charging at night time, either by parking beside their house or in a garage or parking structure of some kind, and those people can charge their cars from empty to full every night, which is usually more than enough for a day's worth of driving, the more people make the switch to electric cars, the higher the number of electric car owners will be who don't have access to off-street or dedicated parking. And that means demand for rapid charging stations will inevitably get higher. It's one of the reasons that we've seen new electric car charging providers spring up. And it's also why we're now finally starting to see charging stations getting installed in multiples of four or more stalls per site. Part of that, I'll grant, is probably due to the way in which Tesla has always arranged its supercharger locations. But network redundancy, volume of customers and future proofing also come into play. Traditionally, high power charging locations with multiple stalls have been installed in locations where there's already a lot of spare capacity in the electrical grid. But as those stations become more and more popular and more and more people use them, the number of charging stations being used at the same time will rise. And that, in turn, will put more demand on the local electrical grid. Even in areas where there is plenty of capacity throughout most of the day, ensuring that there's enough capacity in the grid to charge multiple electric cars at rates in excess of 50 kilowatts can be a challenge, which is where on-site battery packs come into play. That's why Electrify America has just announced that it's going to be working with Tesla to install Tesla power packs at more than 100 of its quick charger sites across the US this year. Initially, the company says each site will house a battery system capable of providing 210 kilowatts of instantaneous power with a total energy storage capacity of approximately 350 kilowatt hours. Over time, Electrify America says that more on-site battery storage can be added at each site due to the modular nature of Tesla's energy storage products. Using on-site power packs is a win-win-win scenario. Or is that win-win-win-win? Because it's good for Tesla, it's good for the charging provider, in this case Electrify America, good for the local utility grid, and good for electric car owners too. And here's why. You see, unlike a domestic customer who usually pays a flat rate for the electricity they use, unless they're a really, really high consumer of electricity or they use some special time of use tariff, commercial customers not only pay for the electricity they use per kilowatt hour, but they also pay based on how quickly that power is drawn from the grid. Why? Well, that's pretty simple. In order to protect the electricity grid from sudden massive power drains, electricity companies charge a premium when there's a sudden spike in demand from a particular commercial customer. As a side, fluctuating demand is actually harder for utility companies to plan for than it is to have a constant high power drain on the grid, which is one reason why these companies add so-called demand charges when a commercial customer suddenly pulls a lot of power from the grid. That extra surcharge means the commercial customer has to pay a lot more for a large amount of power delivered over a short period of time than they would were the same amount of power delivered over a much longer period. So on-site batteries at charging stations make a lot of sense. They can draw power from the grid at a more constant rate, which avoids demand charging, and they're better for the grid too, since the utility company doesn't have to worry about spinning up extra generation capacity, or conversely, make more power than is actually needed. And because they end up paying less for the electricity they use, the charging station operator can dramatically lower their overheads, which means three things are possible if not always followed through. One, the company could theoretically lower the cost for customers to use their charging stations. Two, the company shortens the return on investment for the charging site in question, or actually makes a profit because most charging networks are currently operating at a pretty large loss. Or three, the company can afford to invest more into expanding its network. As for those customers, well, they get to benefit too from a more stable charging experience and maybe lower costs and possibly more charging options too. And Tesla? Well, 
Tesla wins out too, because its power pack business gets to benefit from extra custom while also helping to extend the viability of electric cars outside of its own closed loop supercharger network. I think that you can agree that all of the above can only mean good things for everyone who wants to see more electric cars on the road. Now that's it. Thanks for joining me today. Let me know if you liked it or you didn't like it below. Scribble a comment, hit the notification bell. And if you want to support the channel, there are a whole host of links below me to help you do just that. I'll be back soon with another episode, but until then, keep evolving. <laughs>